Hello and welcome to Showcase Sunday with Alice McGee Barker at AJ Lates Consultancy and Training. And I am here with Hannah Cleesby, who's going to be talking to us on mental health awareness, but what she does in HC training. And the reason why we do Showcase Sunday is so that we can showcase businesses who can help other businesses and help people business owners, managers and teams uh, throughout their working life, but also individuals. And uh, we're here to help support you to sustain and future proof what you do in your business and help you be able to manage it more effectively and efficiently moving forward. So let us go over to Hannah, who we're going to ask. Obviously, Hannah, would you like to introduce yourself and, and what you do in your business? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay, my name's Hannah and I um, own HC Training and through that I deliver mental health first aid and mental health awareness courses on behalf of Mental Health First Aid England. Um, I also offer bespoke mental health training for any organisation. Um, so my background is quite varied. Um, I've got quite a lot of experience working with both young people and adults with mental health conditions and issues. Um, I'm actually a primary school teacher um, and I'm currently on maternity leave, going back very, very shortly. Um, I've also worked as an assistant psychologist and um, working with people with acquired brain injuries and helping them overcome their mental health conditions associated with, with those brain injuries. Um, so I've got quite a lot of experience um, and at the moment I'm obviously I'm delivering uh, mental health training online, obviously due to the restrictions. Um, and it's it's really, really worthwhile because mental health is such an important topic and everybody has it. And we need to get that message out there and educate people so that, that the stigma and discrimination that still is associated with mental health starts to be reduced. I agree. I think I think the the I know I know industries uh, all over the world. Uh, people are still trying to talk through, trying to break down the barriers. It is still there, unfortunately. It was. Uh, it is interesting when you speak to people who have had mental health issues and not actually broach the subject, but if they've broken the leg then they they're allowed time off and 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 it's great that we have yourself who's going to obviously break down those barriers but make people aware and i think you know the more we see with suicides or um sick days etc uh coming off businesses but but also you know anxiety and fear because this the, the pandemic that we've been in has created lots of fear stress anxiety people all over who possibly would never have experienced that before and I think this is where it's so important that you know going on one of your courses or being aware is so vital and and what makes you you yourself Hannah unique and different because you've just said about working in psychology and in a, a brain injury unit that that in itself is extremely unique to be able to deliver this because you are completely aware of what people go through in different stages. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the mental health first aid courses through Mental Health First Aid England that I deliver um, is the only accredited mental health first aid training in, in England currently. Obviously, um, I've got a very, very varied background, lots of life experience as well, personally and professionally. Um, and I think that always brings something new to the table. Um, the courses that I offer at the moment, obviously, once restrictions allow, I can deliver face to face, um, you know, wherever but we also deliver them all online as well now um, and that I think is, is unique in a, in a way because the, there's no longer any geographical restriction so people can you know join these courses wherever they are in this country wherever they are in the world really um, you know it, there's no restrictions in that sense um, and also you know mental health affects every single person we all have it so I think I think that's unique in that, um, you know, 
everybody needs to have some sort of knowledge of mental health and it's it's accessible now it didn't used to be you know people would only learn necessarily about mental health if they worked in that area or they had that particular role in in the workplace maybe but now anybody can join these courses and that's so important and you said earlier about um uh, adults and children and I think I think it is being aware because we are we are understanding now that you know there hasn't been social contact for over a year for a lot of people who've been isolating um, and also children who've been homeschooling not going through the normal working um, not working life but work life uh, as as we yeah. know it we've not been seeing the friends so there's all sorts of anxiety there that's happening and uh, self-harm etc and it's it's about ensuring that you can see that being aware of it but also dealing with it how to deal with it how to broach the subject how to actually deal with it effectively that you don't actually cause more harm than yeah. you know than good yeah absolutely and i mean i think you know the at the moment you know people are coming out of um of lockdown the restrictions are easing and i think as as things start to return to some form of normality there's going to be an awful lot of of issues sort of creeping up and if people aren't trained to spot those signs they'll get missed and eventually we'll have this tsunami of problems related to mental health that we will struggle to deal with you know services are already under a lot of pressure pre-covid you know it's quite frightening to think what's going to happen i know sort of thinking about you know children returning to school there's been an awful lot of anxiety about it you know the fear of the germs and things like that because they've been instilled in them that, that you know you've got to wash your hands all the time and it's you know it's, it's causing an awful lot of um uncertainty for, for not just children for adults anybody and i think the more people that are aware of what to look out for and the sooner we can spot the signs of mental ill health or any sort of developing condition, the better. The outcomes are more likely to be positive. And obviously those people can get the help that they deserve as well. Um, I think this is pre-COVID, there was something like 70 million working days were lost every year to mental health conditions um, at a cost of, of something like 70 to 100 billion to the you know to, to business and um, which is absolutely massive and I mean part of I think the reason why that happens is, is people aren't comfortable in the workplace about talking about mental health you know they're frightened that it might impact their chances of uh, promotion or how people view their ability to do the job and, and it's just not true um, so we need to create safe spaces and safe workplaces where people can can quite happily talk about their mental health because we all have it it's not you know it's not specific to certain people everybody has it and if we can do that spot those signs prevent mental health conditions developing into something more serious then you know it's a win-win for everybody isn't it oh incredibly incredibly and, and that those figures are mind-blowing they really are frightening and, and you just think what that's just pre-COVID. What on earth is it going to be like if we do not get under the skin of this and actually yeah. deal with it effectively now? It's something like one in four adults experience a mental health issue at any time. And I think it was one in 10 children. I wouldn't be surprised if those figures are increasing rapidly, particularly after the, the, the last 18 months. Yeah, definitely. Wow. And, and I think what we've got to look at is what what do you feel many businesses or many business owners and managers are getting wrong right now that that you know they should be addressing what is it that they're doing wrong i think a lot of it is that we don't openly talk about mental health we don't feel comfortable being able to do that in in the workplace that we may be judged and discriminated against um, and and unfortunately that does happen um, so I think if we can if we can break down those barriers and educate people about what mental health is and how we can manage it and develop, you know, our own coping strategies and look after our own well-being and, you know, make sure that people feel comfortable to to reach out when they need to, then we can avoid getting into those situations where people have to take time off work because their their mental health is 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 deteriorating. Mm -hmm. 
And I think a lot of workplaces, they don't have qualified mental health first aiders. They don't have people with the knowledge, the skills and the confidence to, to talk about mental health. And, and that's one of the things that, that I do through my training is, is you know, develop people's confidence to, to have those conversations because they are, they can be, and they are difficult at times, you know, um, approaching somebody and, and talking about things like suicide, you know, it's absolutely terrifying. But through the courses, you know, you, you're prepared for those things, you're given the skills, the knowledge and, um, and the confidence, most importantly, to, to tackle those difficult conversations and make your workplace, your family, your friendship group, that safe place where people can openly talk about mental health. And, you know, that, that's, that's good for everybody. Oh, massively. And I, and I think, you know, when you look at the awareness of it and, and you're right, you know, the, the amount of business owners I speak to uh, across the UK who say, oh, it's all right. We, we talk to our teams. We take time out and say, are you all right? And I think, goodness me, after listening to you, that's not enough. Mm. Yeah. It's not enough because they're, they're not picking up if they've got a mood swing or they've not been sleeping OK. Mm. It's that that mm -hmm. key ability of being able to spot those early warning signs, you know, not waiting till there's a full breakdown, but spotting those little changes in behaviour in your employees, your colleagues, your friends, your family um, and and acting straight away rather than ignoring it for seeing how it goes, you know, spotting those those signs, because there are an awful lot of signs that when when a lot of people come on the courses and and obviously we go through all this and then they say i've seen that i've seen that in such a body i've seen that i've seen that if only i'd seen that and knew that's what it possibly was indicating i could have done something i could have made a difference i could have changed the way things you know turned out um and i think it's being able to spot those signs and act is is really really important Massively. I think, I think we all learned last February, didn't we? You know, uh, not like this last February, the February before poor Caroline Flack. You know, that was a big beacon of light shining, saying, goodness me, we need to wake up now. This is ridiculous. And hashtag be kind was born. Funnily enough, it didn't follow through. Then as soon as COVID hit, because of the fear, the anxiety, the denial, the shock and everything else kicked in. Uh, which brought in all sorts of other elements. And I think it's it's interesting how people handle different situations differently. And and I've seen, you know, um, in my career where two individuals could be in the same room experiencing the same thing, but see it completely differently to the other one. And and yeah. and it's, you know, being completely aware. And, and you've just shared some some tips there about you know, certain things to look out for and, and what testimonials is that where you you actually have uh, got people who said, gosh, I've seen that. And it's awful that you see it in hindsight. But yeah. how amazing would it be if you're proactive and prepared by going on one of your courses and being aware, but also being able to um, access some some you know positive education and knowledge to be able to tackle the tools and techniques to be able to tackle and help and support not just your team but their families and, and yourself as well you know notice yeah. it oh, i've been a bit like that recently or or something's you know come up so so tell me a bit more about what your clients say what what do they say what what would what would your when when your clients have gone through uh, the experience of the mental health awareness and the mental health uh, first aid training? Mm -hmm. What is it that they would tell somebody else thinking about it? You know, what is it that they come away saying you've 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 just highlighted some of the areas that they wish they'd have known earlier, and mm -hmm. it's made them more aware. But what what is it that they they would tell your future clients, for example? Um, I think that the overwhelming response um, from people that have, have gone through the training is that they wish they'd done it sooner. They wish they'd, they'd why haven't they done it before? And um, that everybody should do that, the training, so that they've got that knowledge and the awareness. And um, I think one of the overriding things as well is people think they know what mental health is. And until they've actually done a mental health first aid course, 
they don't really understand um what what mental health means and actually you know what what it encompasses and and how it doesn't it, it's often viewed as something very quite negative um, and actually it can be something really positive um but yeah absolutely everybody i think that comes on the training um is really pleased that they've done it and feels confident to be able to have those conversations and they all go away and say to their colleagues their friends their family you need to do this you, you need to i know the first time i went on the training many many moons ago i sat there and thought why doesn't everybody in a school have to do this training before they set foot in a school because that, that's how I got into it through um, the youth course and um, obviously being a teacher um, and and I just sat there and I thought why 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 we taught this at university this is like vital um, and and the feedback from everybody is very very similar that you know it's really worthwhile they've learned an awful lot they're going to apply it to the you know within their workplace within their home life with that you know their friends and yeah and it's really really good and it's lovely to hear that as well I think, I think knowing that the impact, uh, the impact seems to be a major issue for a lot of um, a lot of people that if they get it wrong, the impact could be life or death in all essence. It could be as severe as that. Yeah. But, but you did mention, you know, the cost to people, but the cost to businesses, the cost to um, families, friends of those they love, you yeah. know, if you can all help and support them. I think, I think you're right there. I think, you know, there is obviously a, a massive financial impact of, of mental health. But if you can, if you by doing one of the courses, you can save a life. It's worth it's completely worthwhile. And in fact, I had I've had a few emails um, in uh, the last few months of people who have, have done the training and they've been in a situation where, you know, something's happened and they've known exactly what to do, exactly what to say, and they've had a really positive outcome. And when I get those emails, I think that's it. We've, we've, we've made a difference and that's what it's all about. And it's it's just knowing where to go for help as well. And, you know, obviously the, the training doesn't turn you into a therapist. It doesn't turn you into someone to solve all, you know, mental health problems, but it gives you that confidence to help that person, support them, validate that their feelings are real and you know make them have hope for the future and that is what it's all about it's critical isn't it and i think it's so so do you when they've been on your course you signpost them to be able to look for help and assistance as well absolutely yeah so one of the things um so in the course you you learn about um a mental health as a whole um you look at your own well-being as well and your own levels of stress and coping strategies that you might use or um helpful ones and unhelpful and um, so it focuses very much on self-care as well we look at certain mental health conditions anxiety depression self-harm eating disorders suicide and psychosis and for all of those we go through an action plan whereby we take you step by step in how you would approach somebody how you would listen to them how you would give them support and information how you would encourage them to get the appropriate professional help and then also encourage other supports as well so for each of those conditions you've got a step-by-step -step guide of what to do and mm -hmm. um, as part of the training the, the full mental health first aid course you also get a manual which is jam-packed with information about mental health all the associated conditions and helplines and references and places that you can access help and i mean it it it's a really thick book and um, there's so much that people can access and then anything that comes up in addition to that you know obviously I will pass that on to people as well because there's all sorts of online things apps now um, you know to help with things like self-harm and um, relaxation there's just so much out there and um, sometimes two days isn't enough to get it all out. <laughs> So, so you've got the courses, obviously, you've just mentioned some of the highlights of the courses, but how long are the courses? You've just said two days, but what's yeah. that for? which one's that for? So the full mental health first aid training is, is a two day course and um, the online ones um, are done through a mixture of live sessions with myself and individual learning on a, 
online learning hub that we have so you have access to like videos reading quizzes things like that but it's all scheduled in with the two through throughout the two days and it's all broken down so it's not like you just sat at a computer constantly you know we put lots of breaks in as well um because we're looking after self-care and well-being um so that's the full mental health first aid course both the adult and the youth one and um, the mental health awareness course is a three-hour course because that's more of an introductory session um, and again that that's online or face to face so brilliant and you also do bespoke ones uh, for, for businesses or individuals yeah uh, who are who've got a group together who'd be able to access you as well yeah absolutely if somebody wants something slightly different or they want me to run a one of the accredited courses just specifically for their group at a specific time or broken down even into you know over several more sessions if that fits better with their you know place of work and things that's you know just whatever just anyone can get in touch and i can we can discuss options brilliant so so much to choose from <laughs> So how can people access you? Obviously, we're going to put all your details and how can they access you, but also your courses? Yeah, so I've got a website and um, I know you're going to put the details on at the end. So I've got a website. I'm on Twitter. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and obviously, I've got email address, phone, con usual, usual contact details. You can even write to me if you wanted to. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And I think, um, you know, when, when you look at how people can access you, the courses, are they all on your website or is that something that you yep. send to them? Yeah, all the courses are listed on my website and there's links that take you to the direct online booking form um, if you want to book on one of the scheduled dates. Um, but, you know, just email me and I will I would get in touch with anybody that wanted to book on if they wanted to know anything else as well. And it would basically benefit everybody, correct? absolutely anybody if you work with any form of human being whatever age from well birth to uh, whatever age it is worth doing if you know if you know people work with them live with them or anything like that you need to do on these courses and the difference it'll make is absolutely massive you potentially could save a life and for me that is so so important but on top of that, you can improve your own well-being because we look a lot at your own self-care. And, you know, it's that analogy when you're on an aeroplane, the oxygen mask comes down. You've got to put your own mask on first before you help anybody else. It's exactly the same with your mental health. Look after your own first. Yeah. And it's interesting. Um, a while ago, I was actually asked that question um, about my children and myself who would you put it on? And I know the answer normally, but because I was in a different scenario, um, I went straight to say, well, I'll, I'll put it on my children. And of course, the the thing that came back, which really hit me hard, and it's something that I, I teach now, um, is that they said, so you'd be happy for your children to watch you slowly die because you couldn't do anything about it. And I thought that actually was something I needed to hear because you can't pour from an empty cup. And the thing I teach every business that I work with is TFM, which is time for me. It's something I always had in throughout my career, working long hours, et cetera. But the moment you don't put your TFM in your diary is the moment that mental health can start, you know, seeping into uh, negativity and, and changing the way you do things and, and have a massive impact. Absolutely, yeah. Do you want my five top tips? I was just going to ask, have <laughs> you got five top tips for me? I uh, have, I've got five. Okay. To help and support anyone yep. who's watching it, watching this now and can't obviously come straight to you, what are the five top, top tips that you can help and support them right now? Until yeah, so number one would be get talking. Have those conversations and just talk, talk, talk. It is so, so important. Um, Second tip would be to sort of be aware of what you might be looking for or any changes in behaviour in people or family, family, friends, anybody. So that awareness of what might be happening. Obviously, number three, educate, get yourself booked on a course, get in touch with me because um, it's so, so important. It, it, as looking at mental health as a whole and reducing that stigma and discrimination ed discrimination education is the key for that and um, number four 
make that difference. OK, whether it's in terms of your own well-being and self-care and making that time for yourself or whether it's making a difference for someone else, just do it. Um, and, and obviously through that, you potentially could save somebody's life as well, which is really, really key. And number five, get out of that comfort zone. I know a lot of people are frightened to come on courses like mental health first aid because they think I don't know anything about it. I might look like I don't know anything. And it's, it's uncomfortable as well for a lot of people if they've had personal or professional experiences with with mental health. And they think it might bring up, um, you know, uncomfortable feelings, which it can do. But get out of that comfort zone because it's the only way that we can make a difference to mental health. Massively. <laughs> Hannah, thank you very much. You have been an absolute joy. And thank you for being my first showcase, Sunday showcase business. Uh, you brought in so much content that is absolutely incredible. And I will definitely share all your details at the end of, um, of this interview. And thank you very much. And, and we will hopefully be able to see lots of people being completely aware about mental health and, and have first aid, mental health first aid within every workplace, but also within every home and within every school uh, to ensure that we can help and support individuals so we don't have a tsunami of um, mm. mental health and illnesses in the future. It's, it's something that's, um, you know, we know it's coming, so let's, let's stop it before it even... Uh, well, let's be proactive rather than oh, reactive. Yeah. Thank you very much, Hannah. Take